in his pulpit. Amen. First Samuel, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse number 6. First Samuel, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse number 6. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you now for the opportunity to stand here behind the sacred desk one more time to preach the gospel, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray now that you would have me to decrease, that you might increase in me, O oh God. So, Father God, we pray now that you would use me for your service, O oh God. Use me now. Use me now for your glory right now so that your people may be edified, O oh God, and you be glorified and you be exalted in this place today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 That's 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter beginning at verse number 6. Uh, 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse number 6. A very, very familiar uh, story uh, here in our Bibles today. And it reads, Now it had happened, as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of, of the Philistine, that the women had come out of all of the cities of Israel. The Bible declares that they were singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. Verse 7, so the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands <laughs> and David his ten thousands. And then it goes on to say that, 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 that Saul was very angry and the saying displeased him and he said that they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom of God? And the Bible says, this is what I want you to hear clearly. It says in verse number 9, So Saul kept a jealous eye on David from that day forward. And then I want you to put a pen there and move on down to verse number 12. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed. <laughs> you don't ever want the Lord to depart from you. Uh, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him, removed David from his presence, and made him his captain over thousands. And he went out and came in before the people. And David and David, and David, and David, it says, behaved wisely in all of his ways. And the Lord was with him. If you go back, I want to highlight that verse number nine. So Saul kept a jealous eye, a jealous eye on David from that day forward. This evening, tonight, we'd like to talk about holding on when you're hated on. Uh, holding on when you're hated on. Holding on when you're hated on. My brothers and my sisters, there is a debilitating, 
devastating, disastrous, demonic force of evil sweeping throughout our atmosphere. It is more illicit than illegal drugs. It is more potent than pot and, and more concentrated than crack cocaine. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about haters. Y'all know them, y'all got them. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about haters. What, well, preacher, preacher, what are haters? Haters, haters, who are haters? Haters are folk who have never, will never, and can't ever, and won't ever be happy for your achievements. <laughs> Who are haters? Haters, haters, haters are folk who have never, will never, and can't ever, and won't ever be happy for your success. Haters, haters have never, and will never, and can't ever, and won't ever rejoice when you are blessed and highly favored by God. Y'all ain't talking to me today. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Well, 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 you tell a hater, you tell a hater that, that I made the honor roll, or I made the dean's list, and, and they'll respond every time, uh, uh, I bet you can't do it again, I bet you it was just luck that time. Now, don't that sound like a hater to you? Somebody drinking haterade, they, they hating on you because the Lord has favored you? Now, don't that sound like a hater to you? Y'all ain't talking to me today. Y'all ain't talking to me today. You tell them that I just got a fresh pair of J's on my feet. Uh, Y'all ain't got no J's, do you? I, 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 I got a fresh pair of J's on my feet. And you know what they're going to say? The only reason why you got those J's because your mama just got on income taxes. <laughs> Don't that sound like a hater to you? And then they even go so far as to say, man, them J's, oh, I had them last year. They're drinking haterade. They, they're never happy for something going good in your life. A hater, a hater, a hater always has something bad for everything good in your life. A hater has something negative for everything positive in your life. And I come to tell you today, Mount Zion, that haters, they're going to do just that. Haters are going to hate because that's just what haters do. Haters, they hate. And they're never, never happy for your success. Never happy for your achievement. So what they do, they just try to pick, uh, pick out a problem and find flaw in everything that's going in your life. That's what haters do. How do I know? How do I know what haters do? I hear you asking. And I'll tell you, I've been hated time or two in my life. And the most aggravating and the most annoying thing is that you can be minding your own business. You can be minding your own business, minding your own two cents, and a hater come dipping in your Kool-Aid. All in your business. And trying to mess up something good for you. And even though you are not in their business and you don't concern yourself with what they're doing, it always seems as if they're in your business concerning themselves about what you do and how you do it and when you do it. Uh, haters, haters. I, I, I'm talking about haters today. Y'all know them, y'all know them. Y'all got haters in your life. And you ask the question, why are they hating on me? They, 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 they seem to be better off than me. They seem to dress a little bit better than me. They, they, they seem to have a little more bling bling around their neck. They, 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 they seem to, to be much better off than me, but yet they're choosing to hate on me. Well, I've just come to discover that, that, that haters are always hating on you because they think that you're living better than them. And why? Why hater? Why hater? Why hater do you hate on me? But what I come to realize and understand is that even though they may be better off than you, even though they may be riding better than you, even though they may be living better than you, even though it seems as if they have more than you, the difference is that you have something that they don't have. And it's something that they want. So therefore, they choose to hate on you. Y'all don't hear me today. Y'all don't hear me today. Y'all don't hear me today. But whatever you have, they always got something to say about whatever it is that you have. 
They always got something to say. It ain't good enough. Well, Mine looks better. Well, uh, 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 somebody else got something else better. There's always something wrong with what you have. Yeah. See, what you are blessed with, they say uh, that you got it the wrong way. Well, uh, they always got something to say and something negative. Whatever you get, they always find something wrong with whatever you have. Y'all yeah. don't hear me today. And the only reason that they say that something is wrong with it is because... They don't have it. They don't have it. The reason why they say you got it the wrong way because they didn't get it. So therefore, they choose to hate on you. They choose to envy you, be jealous of you. The reason why it is not good enough is because they don't have it. And in the text tonight, David has slayed the giant Goliath. Yes, he has. And in the text, it is a time of celebration in which the nation of Israel has overcome the Philistines. Yeah. But just as everyone else is Saul celebrating and David, Saul has slain his thousands and David has slain his ten thousands. And, and the women, as they sang, they, they also were dancing. Yeah. They were there dancing. They were shaking and they, 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 they were moving and, and, and they were doing their thing. Yeah. All right. And then verse number 9 says, from that time on, yeah. Saul kept a jealous eye, jealous eye. a jealous eye, yeah. a hating eye, an envious eye, a jealous eye, a hating eye yeah. on David. Yeah. The word eye means to watch with jealousy or to pay close attention to someone, well. implying having a bad feeling about the object being watched. Yeah. So in other words, so in other words, Saul became so angry that he started shaking. And, and, and the reason why he got so angry was because the folk gave David more credit than they gave Saul. And from that day forward, he began to watch David with a jealous eye. Saul, Saul was king at the time. And Saul could not enjoy what he did have because... He was so busy watching David. Right. And you know, as I think about haters here today, that's just what haters do. Yeah. They're always watching you. Yeah. But they miss over the blessings in their own lives because they're so busy wondering how the Lord has favored you in your life. So, 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 so to all of you haters out there in the congregation today, uh, why won't you look at your own blessings and see how the Lord has blessed you? Oh, glory. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't hear me today. David, uh, Saul was king. He had the crown, but he was busy watching the crowd. He had the crown, but he was busy watching the crowd. And some of you haters... That's your problem. Yeah. You're always watching the crowd. Yeah. The Lord has already crowned you with his favor. Yeah. He's already crowned you with his grace. Yeah. But you're there in the midst watching over the crowd and listening to what the naysayers and everybody else has to say. Yeah. Oh, I just stopped by here today to tell you. <laughs> haters, haters, watch the Lord. Watch the Lord and watch what he's doing in your life. Yeah. Watch what he's doing in your life. And you really would not have noticed it until other folks start talking about it. Had, had you not watched the crowd. But you're busy watching the crowd instead of watching Christ. And I don't know, but it seems like to me that haters really don't start hating on you. Until they see that God has done something or is doing something in your life. And better yet, when God is doing something great in your life. And folk oh, tried him not against him, but he drowned in the Red Sea. Herod tried to fight against him, but I heard an act say that the worms, that the worms got him. Stop trying to fight against your haters, because if you try to get back with them, something will get back at you 
and you have taken the focus off of your mission and taken the focus off of your purpose. That's God's job. That's a large battle because he's a battle axe in the time of battle. And the Lord will fight your battles. Yes, because he is strong and mighty. The Lord will fight your battle. This battle is not yours, but this battle is the Lord's. This battle is not yours, but the battle belongs, belongs to the Lord. But what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying tonight? What are you saying? What I'm saying that if I stick to the mission, if God took care of the life, and God took care of Pharaoh, and if God took care of Herod, God will take care of your haters. But first, you got to recognize your perpetrator. Recognize your purpose. And then you need to recognize the source of your power. Verse number 12 says that the Lord, that the Lord, that the Lord, that the Lord, that the Lord was with David. In other words, the Lord was the source of David's strength. The Lord had brought David from a mighty long way. He had brought David from being a little shepherd boy. A little boy that was looked over in the pasture. The Lord had brought him from a mighty long way. The Lord had watched over David when he slew Goliath. And so the Lord was there with him. And the Lord was the source of his strength. Brother Preacher, what do you mean he was the source of his strength? It was nothing more than the favor of God in his life. And you know, 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 if there's anything that we ought to ask for in our lives, it is the favor of God. If there's anything that we need in our lives, it is nothing more than the favor of God. Why do you say that, preacher? Because favor will put gas in your car when you ain't got no money in the bank. Favor will buy you health insurance when you ain't got no job. Favor will help you raise a man, a man, to raise a boy into a man when he ain't got no father in his life. So if there's anything we need in our lives, it is nothing more than the favor of God. And I don't know about you tonight, but I'm glad that I got God's favor. I got God's favor in my life. You see, you see, you see the product in my life. But you weren't there when I was going through the process. I got the product going through the process because God favored me. Because God favored me. You weren't there when I was going through my test. And God allowed it to turn into a testimony. You weren't there when my story was all bad. And now that the Lord has turned it around, now that the Lord has turned it all around, now that the Lord has turned it around, the Lord has had favor in my life. You want to hate, but I thank God, I thank God, thank God for favor. Is there anybody here tonight? in the house who has the favor of God in your life. I need about 20 folks tonight to stand on their feet and say, I thank God, 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 I thank God for favor.
usually I'm not that angry, but just you like to thank you for all your hard work that you do for us because you are so dedicated to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. You are the best. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
name on my head. I'm going to turn it over to the lady that's over our youth group, and that's Miss Teresa Griffin. to everyone, to Reverend Loudon, to Mrs. Loudon, to Sister Marilyn, to Sister Gracie, Reverend Gracie, um, Brother Baylor and Miss Baylor, and of course, um, to Reverend Anderson and Ms. Anderson. We truly have been blessed here today. Um, but please give our young people a hand again. Stand in ovation. They need y'all. Stand in ovation. I didn't even get up there. We truly thank you for coming here today. Um, without you, our program would not have been a success. We thank um, Reverend Loudon for giving us the opportunity to do this. Um, when Sister Sabrina asked me about it, I told her, yeah. I said, but you know you got to go through the pastor. So um, I truly want to say just thank you, thank you, thank you. And whatever you do, continue to pray for our young people. Because without our young people, we are nothing. God gives us an opportunity to be before our young people. So everywhere we go, we should show them that God is in control. And if we leave God in control, anything and everything is possible. Thank you. You just don't know. want to say, young people, turn it around. And as the adults are present, lead with a hand of love and compassion and correct as such. And be the example of God's grace and mercy. Love as God has loved you. God will take care of all. Truly we are thankful. Uh, to the YPD is God bless you. You got my heart. I'm so thankful. And with, our, with the, the greatest YPD director in the world. Macedonia, God bless you. I've been inside your walls 30 years ago. We practiced on a choir that I sung on. But you know what? You never know what God is going to do down the road. So it is a wonderful privilege to again to meet the pastor. Amen.
to Mount Zion Church and deliver a message from the Lord. And I again, wonderful pastor, we do thank him again for allowing me an opportunity. And to Sister Connor, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, let us all pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen today and for what our ears have heard, O oh God. Father God, we pray now for this food, these light refreshments that have been prepared. We pray that may be used for the nourishment of our body and that you would consecrate our bodies to thy service. Father God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we pray that you would be with us now and forevermore and let all of God's children say, Amen. 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 Amen.